Welcome to Carlton's Math Corner. Today we're going to be discussing fractions. At this point, please make sure you have everything out so that you can take great notes and you can record definitions as well as sketches. Well, let's review. First of all, uh, let's talk about rational numbers. So rational numbers, remember, are numbers that can be written as a fraction. And in the beginning of the year, we talked about all these different types of rational numbers. And today, we're going to focus on fractions. And over the next few targets, we're going to talk about percents as well as decimals. So let's kind of look at the three, the three rational numbers that we're going to be looking at. Um, fractions first. That will be today, and then over the next couple days, percents and decimals. So fractions, well, there are two types of fractions. The first type is a proper fraction. And a proper fraction means that the numerator, that's the top number, is smaller than the denominator, the bottom number. And then when the numerator is larger or greater than the denominator, it is called an improper fraction. For percents, percents can be written in many different fashions. The first way is under 100%, then over 100%, and then it can have a decimal point in it, or it can have a fraction in it, 7.5%. Then decimals. Decimals can be under 1%. They can be over 1, and they can look like a whole number. And actually, the decimal point is at the end. You just don't normally see it like this. You don't walk around and say, you know, I am 12 point years old. Or I have 100 point dollars. That's usually not how you say a whole number. But whole numbers are decimals. Uh, or you can actually see the decimal point, and that would be the last example. And so the decimal point is in between a whole number as well as a fractional part. Okay, and so these are the three types that we're going to be looking at for um, different types of rational numbers. And this is what we're going to look at for the next few targets. So let's start off with fractions. Well, let's talk about what is a fraction. A fraction is a number that represents a part out of a whole. So this is the part on top. That's called our numerator. And then our whole amount is on the bottom. That's our, called our denominator. And D for denominator, so a D for down in the basement. It's down in the scary basement. Okay. And so numerator, denominator, part, whole. Now today, we're going to be looking at fractions as basically as a division problem. So we are going to look at, and I am going to actually put a box around some work that I've done. And so what I want you to look at is 5 eighths. Okay, 5 eighths is our fraction, and we are going to look at it as 5 divided by 8. The 5 has basically, as the numerator, has been knocked over and put inside this division problem. And so this 5 has become what we call the dividend. And then the 8 remains on the outside of the division problem. It's called a divisor. And so what happens is we try to figure out how many times 8 is going to go into 5. And unfortunately, 8 does not go into 5 because 5 is a smaller number. And so what we're going to do is kind of do some steps to figure out how what our answer is. And we're going to use this method. It's called Does McDonald's Sell Cheeseburgers? So the D stands for divide. M stands for multiply. S stands for subtract, and C stands for check. So we're going to start off by going, okay, so 8 does not go into 5. That's divide. 
it doesn't divide into 5. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a decimal point right here to show that I need to add a 0 to make it a little bit bigger number so that I can put 5 into it. And so when I add a 0, I'm kind of going to ignore this decimal point, and I'm going to look at it as 50. So now I'm going to divide. Just 50 divided by 8. You know, can I think of a number that 8 times what would get me close to 50? Well, I know that 6 times 8, 6 times 8 is 48. Well, that's really close. And that's my next step is to multiply. 8 times 6, 48. So I would put my 6 up here. 8 times 6 is 48. And so I put the 48 down here. My next step is to subtract. So, because I'm going to try to find the remainder. Well, I didn't get quite, I didn't get 50. And so I know that I'm close, but I'm not quite there. So 50 minus 48 is 2. And I'm going to check. Check means 2 should be a smaller number than 8, or it should be smaller than whatever your divisor is. And it is, but it's a remainder. I don't want any remainders, and I know in elementary school you were able to put a remainder up here, and you left it as your answer with a remainder. Well, in middle school, uh, we keep going until we either don't have a remainder or we have a pattern. And so we're going to add another 0 and drop it down. And so now I'm going to look at it as, here's 20. 20 divided by 8, because I'm going to start all over. I'm going to divide. 20 divided by 8, the closest I can get to is 2. So I'm going to take 2, because I'm going to multiply. 2 times 8 is 16. So I'm going to put 16 down. And the next step is to subtract. So I'm going to subtract. 20 minus 16, I get a remainder again of 4. So I'm going to drop down another 0. So now I have 40. So now 40 divided by 8, because I start all over again, because 4 is smaller than the 8, and I forgot to check that it is smaller. I drop down the 0. 40 divided by 8 is 5. 5 times 8. 40. Yay, we have zero remainder. And so at this point, since I have a zero, I don't need to check, it's just zero. I just know that this is then my final answer, and that is called a quotient. Okay, so quotient. And so notice, look at your final answer. It is written in what form? A decimal. So when we look at a fraction as a division problem, what happens is we change this fraction into a decimal form. And so 5 eighths is the same as 0.625. So if you look at the next three problems, <clears throat> 2 fifths, and I need to get this out of here for a moment, 2 fifths, 1 third, and 7 eighths. Will you try those three problems out? And then we'll talk about them in just a moment. Remember to use our little saying, does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So start off, divide, multiply, subtract, and then check. So two-fifths, this is what I got, 0.4, because two fell over into the inside, and so five remained on the outside. I had to add a zero because two, 5 does not go into 2. That doesn't work. So I needed to make it look bigger. So I add a 0. 5 goes into 24 times, and I get 0 remainder. And so 0.4 is my answer. 1 third, I got 0.33333 repeating. And this symbol here shows that 3 is going to repeat, and it's called a repetin. Oops. Repetin symbol. And so this shows, this line is, you always put it over the number that has the pattern. So 3 is being repeated, so that's what I put the line over is the 3. And remember I said you can stop either when you have a zero remainder or you have a pattern. And notice, look at the pattern. I start off with uh, 3 doesn't go into 1, so I add a zero. Well, 3 goes into 10 three times. 
But look what happens. 3 times 3 is 9. I subtract, I get a 1 again. So I have 1 again. 3 doesn't go into 1 again. Drop down a 0. And then I still get a 9 and I subtract. So the pattern just keeps going and going and going. So I can stop and say my answer is 0.3 repeating. Uh, 7 eighths. The last one. This is what I got. I got 0.875. This one I had to keep going until I got a remainder of zero. And it ended perfectly. It's a terminating decimal. So this is called repeating decimal. And we talked about these um, in our first vi video on rational numbers. This is called a repeating decimal. It repeats a pattern. This is a terminating decimal. It stops. Well, what would happen if I put a whole number in front of my fraction. Do you think we would do the same steps? Well, whenever I put a whole number in front of a fraction, that is called a mixed number. And so two and or seven and two thirds is an example of a mixed number. Which part do you think, the orange or the purple, which one do you think that we will have to divide and change to a decimal? You are right, the purple. Nice job. We will have to change 2 thirds to a decimal. And so let's change 2 thirds into a decimal. Well, the 2 falls over into the middle, and the 3 stays on the outside. So this is what it looks like. 2 falls over, 3 stays on the outside. And notice, it actually starts repeating a pattern. I love it. So we get 0.66666. And I'm just going to put a repetent sign on top. And so which part stayed the same on this mixed number? The 7. So this is the part we changed to a decimal because it's the fractional part. This part stays the same. And so this is the answer we get. 7 stay the same. And then 0.6666 is the second part of this answer. Or we write it as 7.6 with a repetent sign out of it. So let's try three of three problems. 12 and 3 fourths, 8 and 1 ninth, and 108 and 2 fifths. And let's check our answers. I'll give you a moment. Okay, so 12 and 3 fourths, this is what I got. First of all, I noticed that 3 fourths is my fractional part, so I changed that part to a decimal. And the 3 fell over into the middle, the 4 stayed on the outside, and I got 0.75. The 12 remained the same, that's my whole number, and so my answer is 12.75. 8 and 1 ninth. I notice 1 ninth is my fractional part. So the 1 fell over and the 9 stayed out. And so I got 1.11111. And so the 8 is my whole number. And so I kept that on the outside and I can write it as 8.11111. Or easier way in mathematics is put a repetent sign on top of the 1. So it'd be 8.1 repeating. And lastly, 108 and 2 fifths. 2 fifths is my fractional part. And so 2 fell over into the inside, 5 stayed out. And when I divide it, I get 0.4. And 108 is my whole number, so 108.4 is my answer. Here are your ticket problems for tomorrow. Please complete these four write either the fraction or the mixed number as the decimal. Thank you so much for joining me at Carlton's Math Corner, and I look forward to meeting with you again to learn some new concepts.